Well, we have a 58 year old man. He has been admitted to the hospital with nausea and vomiting. He has polyuria, polydipsia, constipation for several weeks. There is a history of hypertension and type 2 diabetes. Very strong history of smoking, 35 pack year of smoking history. His mucous membrane is totally dry. The lab reports are as follows. As far as the investigation are concerned, calcium is much higher level and PTH level is reduced and you can find the glucose level is high and even urea creatine level are on the higher side, much higher than the normal range. But vitamin D levels are by and large in the normal range. Most likely cause of the patient hypercalcemia is hypercalcemia of malignancy. Why this answer? Why not others? Let's go into more details. So first of all, uh, when we talk about uh, hypercalcemia, how to diagnose a case or how to approach a case of hypercalcemia? So first of all, when we get a hypercalcemia, you have to confirm it by repeated testing. So the one thing that single reading should not be taken uh, as a granted, better to confirm, reconfirm by repeated checking. Why? The re there is a reason behind that that I am going to discuss in the next slide. Correct for albumin concentration or major INI is calcium. This again a very important point not known to most of students. Because why albumin is important, again I am going to discuss in the coming slides. Well, once we have done it, then you check the PTH level. The PTH level may be normal, high normal or elevated. Then we call it to be PTH dependent type of hypercalcemia. But it may be the PTH level may be suppressed. Then we call it. Then we call it to be PTH independent. If it is PTH independent, then you measure PTHRP. What is PTH, uh, PTHRP? I am going to discuss in the coming slide. And you also supposed to do the measurement of vitamin D also. This is in nutshell how to approach a case of hypercalcemia. Okay, any cause of hypercalcemia. But before I proceed further, there are certain questions. Write down the answer in your copy. The question one, what precaution we take when withdrawing blood sample for serum calcium level? What the relation of serum calcium and serum elbow in the two points, which I discussed in the previous slide also. So now we have a very good question. Write down the answer in your copy. So for regarding the first question, what precaution we take while withdrawing the sample? We don't use tourniquet. We know very well when we are taking sample, blood sample, we tie, tie a tourniquet in the arm because to so that it facilitates the withdrawing of the blood. But when you are taking for this, for serum calcium, don't use tourniquet because that can falsely raise the calcium level. That's why repeated testing is needed, which I told you in the very first slide, to confirm serum calcium level. Well, what is the relation of serum calcium and serum albumin? In the very beginning, I told you that uh, when we are taking sample for calcium, we have to check serum albumin level also. So let's learn the basic concept. Normal serum calcium level, 8.5 to 10.5 milligram person. Ionize is 50%. It is this which is metabolically active, especially in muscle contraction or maybe in clotting. Is the ionized one which is important. Calcium bound to anine 10% and then anine are citrate and phosphate. Non diffusible is calcium bound to protein, mainly to albumin. Okay. Effect of hypoalbuminemia that lead to decreased total serum calcium. Why? I told you about 40% of the uh, calcium is bound to protein. So this is due to decrease in calcium bound to albumin level. So that portion get reduced. But normal free ionized level and normal PTH level. And since the ionized level is normal, so there will be no evidence of tetany. I told you it's the ionized calcium which is metabolically active. Now, we have a formula that correct total serum calcium when hypoalbuminemia is present. 
the formula is corrected serum calcium level what the call as you check serum calcium this is measured whatever you have measured minus serum albumin plus 4 this is the formula that we do when we are checking for for total serum uh, calcium level now let's see what are the cause of hypercalcemia there can be primary or tertiary hyperparathyroid point to note it in secondary hyperparathyroid serum calcium level is reduced don't forget it is increased in tertiary hyperparathyroid also familial hypercalcemic hypocalciuria is the one where family history will be positive of course family history of hypercalcemia malignancies there are various malignancy i am going to talk in the coming slide vitamin d intoxication granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis tuberculosis milk alkali syndrome thyroid toxicosis and prolonged immobilization these are some of the cause of hypercalcemia well now i have certain more question for you you can write down the answer in your copy other than vitamin d intoxication of which vitamin can cause hypercalcemia and why hypercalcemia occurs in granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis write down the answer quickly in your copy well other than the answer is other than vitamin d vitamin a intoxication can also lead to hypercalcemia why hypercalcemia occur in granulomatous disease because in in any granuloma there is extra renal synthesis of vitamin d so all granulomatous tissue can themselves can synthesize vitamin d in fact what happen this 25 hydroxylation which occurs in liver everybody knows and this get converted into 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol this reaction occurs in kidney and pth is needed in this particular reaction now in granulomatous tissue this reaction can occur them cell they can them cell can make vitamin d also they they in this step they may not even need pth also so that's why that's why without even presence of pth uh, the granulomatous tissue can make vitamin d and that can lead to hypercalcemia now there are few more question which diuretic and drug used in psychiatry can cause hypercalcemia lovely very frequently asked question throughout the world answer is thiazide diuretic and lithium is well known to lead to this problem now tell me lithium can lead to which other effect in kidney very very important question write down the answer well lithium can also lead to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and this one reason it can lead to polyuria well so with this background now we come to the main topic of hypercalcemia whenever we are getting as i told you in the very beginning we categorize into two category one is pti dependent and in this the pti level is increase or maybe high normal point to note it in primary hyperparathyroid at time the pti level may be normal or it is usually the high normal or it may be high also like hyperthyroid specifically primary hyperparathyroid pti independent in this the pti level is low or it is suppressed so broadly we classify into increased pti or reduced pti well humoral hypercalcemia of malignancy what we call as hhm is the most common cause of pth independent hypercalcemia point to be noted that means we don't need pth for this type of hypercalcemia it frequently present with high serum calcium while well, it may be as high as more than 14 mg per cent 
and we know very well in primary hyperparathyroid, calcium level is high, but it is usually less than 12 milligram per cent. But here the level may be very, very high. H HSM should be, and of course, patient is symptomatic, polyuria, constipation is there. And you should be strongly suspecting the patient with a light of smoking history that can predispose to squamous cell lung cancer. I like to highlight a special point. We know very well there are lots of neuroendocrine features in lung cancer. Most of them are due to small cell lung cancer. But hypercalcemia got due to squamous cell lung cancer. Systemic symptom, fatigue, poor appetite, polyuria, markedly elevated calcium and low PTH. I told you very clearly in the very beginning that PTH malignancy, which are due to PTH related peptide, the PTH level is reduced and the calcium level is very, very high. Now, as I told you, this is due to secretion of PTH related protein, what you write as PTRP, by the malignant cell. They, and this molecule has many features which resemble like PTH. And this is come with squamous cell lung cancer of lung cancer, head and neck cancer, squamous cell. Other are renal, bladder, breast and ovarian cancer also they can secrete PTHRP. Now what does PTHRP causes? It causes increased bone resorption. Increased resorption of calcium in the distal corneal tubule and both of these will lead to lead to hypercalcemia. Okay. Well, very simple, but worth million dollar question. What is the effect of PTHRP on vitamin D level? What happened with vitamin D level? The answer to this question is, it does not induce conversion of 25 hydroxylation to 125. Okay, it doesn't have that effect as of PTH. So that's why vitamin D level may be low or low normal, not very high. Now, other cause of PTH independent hypercalcemia and malignancy include not only this increased osteoclastic activity and that lead to bone resorption. Other reasons are bone destruction by osteolytic metastasis and that we see in breast, non-small cell carcinoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma and multiple myeloma. Extra renal increased production of 125 hydroxylation and that, okay, and increase interleukin 6 level that we see in multiple myeloma. This is seen in, in non-malignant. Non-malignant is in granomas like sarcoidosis, tuberculosis. But my question is, which malignancy causes hypercalcemia by extra renal increased production of vitamin D? Which malignancy I am talking about? Answer is very good question. Lymphomas have this quality. Now let's look into other option. Chronic kidney disease is incorrect, and this causes decreased renal production of vitamin D, and that lead to hypocalcemia, hyperphosphatemia, and in in compensation increased PTH, what we call as secondary hyperparathyroid. Okay. The, it is the hypocalcemia which induces all the problem and that lead to secondary hyperparathyroid. Now here I want to highlight in nutritional deficiency of maybe in case of vitamin D, so-called Rickett and Ostomalacia, they can also lead to a type of secondary hyperparathyroid. But in those cases, serum calcium level is reduced, phosphate level is also reduced. So both are cause of secondary hyperparathyroid, but we can differentiate by phosphate measurement. Now, uh, well, in all chronic renal failure and state renal disease, calcium level is reduced, but there is one exception. In which patient who has chronic kidney disease with hypercalcemia? Very, very frequently asked question throughout the world. That means patient has chronic renal failure, but still hypercalcemia is there. Write down the answer in your copy. Answer is multiple myeloma. It's a unique exception where hypercalcemia with, with CRF and of course even kidney size is normal 
or may be increased but definitely unlike other cause of uh, crf with the kidneys are bilaterally shrunken and contracted this is not seen in multiple myeloma well option b is incorrect hydrochlorothiazide induced hypercalcemia it causes increased urinary calcium reabsorption but it lead to mild increase in serum calcium level calcium level are usually less than 20 mg per cent is never very high severe hypercalcemia usually does not occur now which congenital kidney disease has the clinical feature just like hydrochlorothiazide again a very commonly asked question write down the answer in your copy the answer to this question is gentleman syndrome it has all the feature of just like thiazide diuretic now osteoporosis rapid bone destruction due to skeletal metastasis may cause hypercalcemia but in osteoporosis is a bone loss is very slow very slow gradual process never sudden that's why serum calcium level never changes it remain in the normal range again i have one more question what happened to serum phosphate level in osteoporosis quickly write down the answer in your copy the answer to this question it is again normal so in case of osteoporosis serum calcium level phosphate level and pth level everything is normal calcium phosphate and pth normal option a e is incorrect primary hyperparathyroid first of all in primary hyperparathyroid usually calcium level is below 12 it is high normal is up to 10.5 8.5 10.5 but is never very severe hypercalcemia moreover pth level are suppressed in our patient so this ruled out primary hyperparathyroid i have one more question for you primary hyperparathyroid occurs most commonly in which age group of the patients write down the answer in your copy it occurs in the age of 40 to 50 years more in females as compared to males golden line to remember humoral hypercalcemia of latency is the most common cause of pth independent hypercalcemia it frequently present with very high symptomatic calcium level due to secretion of pth related protein by malignant cells other mechanism of tumor related hypercalcemia include osteolytic bone metastasis increased production of vitamin d especially by lymphomas increase interleukin 6 which is seen in multiple myeloma well i hope you like the session just to inform you we have following courses for you smart medicine there are 350 hours of pre recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine it includes all super specialty and allied subject covering a to z including basic concept about every topic second we have tests and discussion there are more than 1000 question which with discussion of the questions sample question and discussion you saw in this session now third thing is medicine simplified which is a textbook of medicine harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine but it is too vast reading one page of harrison you need half an hour to understand you need 2 hours but you need only 2 minute to forget what was written in that page then what is the solution we have medicine simplified it's a textbook of medicine but so called mini harrison it's a summary of what you need to read from harrison the book is available in amazon also now these three things are more than enough for your md dnb medicine and family medicine final exam preparation need ss exam preparation you don't need to read any other book these three are complete in all the aspect for more detail you can contact at this number it's a mobile ad, as well as whatsapp and this is my personal email id anybody want to reach to me you can contact me at this email id thank you very much God bless you.